Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and it's really pretty. I decided to come out here and sit. And let's talk about what we can plant in Southern California and in areas where you're still warm. You can pretty much still plant all your brassicas. There's a lot of stuff you can plant right now. You can plant lettuce, you can plant cilantro, you can even plant radishes and carrots. You can plant any of the brassicas. Basically what you can't plant is sun-loving plants. Plants like tomatoes that really want a lot of sunlight. And when I say that, if you've already got the tomatoes stab established, they may continue to grow all into the fall and winter. But starting them now, they may not. Melons and plants like that, squash, no. You're pretty much done until spring, so you can start to get those out. And then ginger and turmeric, they're gonna be done pretty soon. So I wouldn't really do too much unless you're gonna bring them in the house. And I do grow ginger and turmeric on my windowsill. So if you've got a nice sunny window, you can go to the store and as long as it's not irradiated or treated, you can actually plant them in a flower pot and have them growing on your windowsill. And then come spring, you can put them out. Kind of think about what you wanna do. Now, as far as propagating, I'm doing a lot of propagating right now because you can put that in a warm area. Like I'm putting them in totes and this way the totes have a cover. It'll keep it a little warm. They won't get that chill factor of draft. And then I should be able to get a lot of cuttings that I can put out in the spring and maybe even in the winter if it doesn't get too cold. But in the meantime, by putting individual cuttings in one pot, I can leave them growing in there for the next four, five, six months, say. If I put a whole bunch, like four or five, which you can do, you can line up your cups and put a whole bunch in there, it just might get overcrowded and then they might struggle and sometimes the, the weaker ones get knocked out one way or another. So that's why I like putting one in each cup. But most certainly you can do more than one. So pretty much you can do all that. Now, if you're in an area where you're absolutely done gardening right now until spring, until you start getting your seeds out after the holidays and everything, then think about microgreens. You can grow microgreens if you want. Now, I'm not a big fan, of, personally, of microgreens. I don't have to. I don't have to grow any microgreens because I can find things to grow around here. And we have all our brassicas and collard and kale and lettuce and all that's just going to take off and grow right now. Broccoli. Brussels sprouts you can grow now. There's so many things here in our area because we don't freeze. But you can do microgreens and they are very, very healthy. Now, there's things, like I said, you can grow on a windowsill. Or the other thing is, if you're done with gardening, you're done with gardening. You take a break. Enjoy the holidays. You know what I do? I watch Hallmark movies. They're starting their Hallmark movies for Christmas. They run 24-7. I have to admit, I'm not real big on getting a lot of sleep a lot of times. And I actually will watch a lot of movies. Even Gary watches a lot of movies. Hey, maybe we should do a round table and sit around after some of these movies and chit chat. What do you think? What should they have done? Was it done right? There was a couple for the past few years that were a little bit, you know, people talking about maybe it wasn't done right or they should have done it differently. But I happen to like it. It's kind of like kicking back and just enjoying yourself, taking a break. We all need a break. So you go to the store and you buy what you need and hopefully you did grow some stuff that you could freeze because I have a lot of stuff that we freeze. I freeze on my tomatoes and my peppers. This year I got really good in freezing peppers. I'm going around right now in the meadow in the back there. It's got tons of tomatillos and I've been collecting those, washing them and freezing them. So I can make salsa when I make tacos or enchiladas or whatever Gary wants to put the salsa on. So if you're still growing things, think about freezing stuff. Even your greens. If you've got greens, you can freeze that. And you don't have to worry about if it's mushy when you take it out because you're going to put it in soup or something anyway. So it's broke down. Just get it in there and it'll be perfectly fine. Parsley, you can freeze anything. You don't have to have a big freezer for that either. You can freeze small amounts in small plastic bags. But what I want you to think about is... It's been tough for the past couple years for some of us. Some of us have had it harder than others. And maybe now we're in the fall, we're going into the holiday season. 
maybe kick back, watch some holiday movies, think about how you want to do your garden. Maybe you just want to go out there and start setting up some stuff or moving things around. Hey, I've been doing that. I tore apart a whole part of my garden. I'm ready to tackle the other part. So maybe you can think about how you want to set things up. You don't have to do everything right away. If you slowly think, do I want to do totes? Do I want to do buckets? Do I want to do raised beds? Do I want to do my garden in the ground? Think about how you want to do it and then slowly maybe put it on paper. Maybe you want to just hand sketch how you want to do it. And this way you're kind of like ahead of the game you'll kind of be ready to go in the spring because after the holidays, everybody starts buying their seeds, which is a good time to get them. You wanna get them before they run out of certain things. And then you can start to grow certain things in the house. You don't wanna jump the gun and grow too many things too early. And I've done it. You grow a whole bunch of melons and then you get out there and the weather's still too cool. And then the melons stay little or they get wimpy and then they don't grow. So you wanna kind of just be ready for it. But I think thinking about how you want to do things, you actually may be more prepared. Things are getting more expensive. We all know that. Food prices are going up big time. Not only are they going up big time, but the food you grow is always going to be better. So you can mix and match. You buy some and you add some. We buy probably 20%, I don't even know if we buy 20% of our food, maybe because of meat, but as far as produce, we get probably 90% out of our gardens from our own, you know, food that we grow, and we prefer that. I might buy some apples if we don't have enough, or blueberries if we don't have enough, but a lot of stuff is coming from the garden. I think by planning, taking your time, enjoying the holidays, whether you're with family or if it's just you, watch some TV, watch happy movies. Try not to watch too much of the news. There's nothing good in the news. The news brings us down. It causes a lot of stress. If you have to watch a little bit and then get to the movies. I find Hallmark movies relaxing. I used to watch old movies. I used to love the old black and white movies. And then I realized too many of them didn't end that nice. And I, I didn't actually get that good feeling. I want that good feeling. So Hallmark movies, they pretty much all have that good feeling from the movie. Whether you feel like you could do that or it, or it kind of relates to you or, or it's just a, a, a feel good movie. That's what I do. And think about things that are gonna make you feel good. Now, the other thing of course, is you can go on YouTube and you can scroll through all their shorts. Well, I do that. And then I like watching videos. I actually like watching a lengthy video that somebody put up on YouTube, whether it's on gardening or some sort of craft work or cooking, that you can kick back on the couch and enjoy yourself. That is something I really like. It's, it's more, it's not just entertaining, it's very educational. I think that's really, really important. So I think if we pace ourselves slower and we think about how we want to do things and do a little more planning, we may be able to get a whole lot more done because I know I ran out here this year and it was like, oh, I'm going to get all these gardens done. I've got a dozen gardens. I can get it all done next week. I'll film them all. It's all ready. It's going to happen. I can't do that all. I mean, I've got all these totes back there. So look at that. I'm not going to be able to get them all. Hey, I did all those though. But now that I'm pacing myself, I actually find myself getting more done. Isn't that something? And I have these flies bothering me now. It's the sun is going down and these are the evening flies coming up. By pacing myself and stepping back and thinking, I do find myself getting more done. And I think if we all took a step back, if you've got a day you're not gonna do anything, don't do anything. You deserve a break. And then you'll probably find you'll do more. I took a day off and I felt guilty. And then I came outside the other day and I thought, I know how I want to do that. Maybe because I rested. Maybe because I took a day off and just did the everyday stuff I needed to do. And when I stepped out into my rainbow garden, I finally decided how I really wanted to do it. 
And without anybody knowing Gary was working on a video, I tore apart my rainbow garden and I changed everything. And I'm happy. Now, I haven't planted in it yet in this whole new section I did. But the thing was, had I put it together last year like I said I was going to do it, I don't know. I don't think I would have liked it as much. Because I took my time and I came out with a cup of coffee and I sat there and I wasn't planning on doing anything. I was just planning on, I can walk around a little bit. I got dragonflies around me. Let's go walk over to the meadow. I was just planning on just coming out and sitting and enjoying, you know, the morning. I suddenly found myself tearing everything apart. And I kept going until I was done. I got my soldering iron out. I got my stakes out. And everything was set up the way I wanted it. And I think it was because I took that break the day before. And I think we all need a break. Even the ponds that I keep saying I'm going to do. I may come out here one day and just surprise myself. See all the top? You probably can't see them, but it's loaded with tomatillos. Let me see if you can see them. They're all over the ground. And I've been collecting them. Taking a break. Breathe. Breathing is so important. You, you take a deep breath in. And you hold it for eight seconds. And then you breathe out. And then you wait. And then you breathe in. You know, it lowers your blood pressure. It really does. And you feel better. So we do need to step back and start thinking about stress relief because we all need stress stress relief we're all stressed the whole world right now is pretty much stressed we need to take our time and think about things enjoy the holidays so many of you tell me oh my gosh the hummingbirds are gone the hummingbirds are doing what they're supposed to do they're migrating whether they're coming here and enjoying my kitchen window in the garden or they're going all the way to South America or Mexico or Central America. I don't know where they're going, but wherever they're going, they're doing what they're supposed to do. That's part of nature. So instead of being so depressed that they're gone, and I know a lot of you are, embrace the fact that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Where, why are they leaving? They're leaving because they know where the food is. They know what is going to keep them healthy, happy, and alive. But then they also know come spring, when they know the weather is changing, they are going to start heading back to you. And that's what you want to think about. That not so much that they're gone, and of course it'd be sad, I'd be sad too, I'm sad that the Orioles are gone. But the point is, this is how it works. They're very seasonal birds and they know to do that. Otherwise, if they stuck around, they wouldn't live. They would not be able to find enough food. So they're smart enough to know that they have to go. That's a good thing. And you know what? You got three months of the holidays. Think about things that make you smile. Like I said, for me, it's the Christmas movies. I love holiday movies. I love the happy ones. I'm not in the horror movies. Some of you are, but that's just not my thing. I don't want to sit on the edge of the couch going, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? I want to be able to sit there and enjoy myself, make some popcorn, which the dogs all happen to love, or just kick back and then slowly fall asleep. Think about after the three months and we go into the new year, then we're going to start thinking about what we're going to plant. Now, if you're not under snow, you can start to set up. I can start to set up that wall that's empty over there. I could slowly drag my totes there, think about what I want to do, and who knows, maybe I'll do buckets and potatoes there. Maybe I'll put another cardboard box garden. I don't know. I'm not really big on the cardboard boxes, but we'll see. The point is, think about what will work easier for you. Now, I am a tote lover. I'm not putting anybody down for growing in grow bags, buckets in the ground. You have to grow what works for you. I can't grow in the ground. Why can't I grow in the ground? Because of that. That is one of the reasons I can't grow in the ground. It won't let me. I found it in my rainbow garden. These trees are massive. 
and they send their roots out anywhere they can to get some water. And while they're doing that, they're also killing my plants. So if I want that tree, and I most certainly do, then I'm gonna have to figure out another way to garden. And I figured out totes. Now, another reason I love totes, not just because I love totes, a tote is a raised bed. We talk about this all the time. These are 18 gallons, but I also grow in 33 and other ones too. An 18 gallon raised bed gives me the opportunity to treat each one as a mini raised bed. And now I can grow celery, I can grow garlic chives, I can grow Swiss chard. I can grow in small little units. Let's think about it that way. Look at my truck bed. That thing is massive. It is full of squash that I can't seem to climb into. Gary's too busy and I'm not gonna ask him, but I got a lot of tomatillos I can get. I have to plant that whole thing up. It's like, it's not a bedroom, like you have a house with four bedrooms and you've decided you don't want to use two of them and you close the door. You can't do that with a great big raised bed. You really can't. You, you have to fill the whole thing and you have to water the whole thing and you have to take care of the whole thing. Whether I'm even going to grow in just half, I would have to take care of that whole giant bed. Okay? But with a tote, I can do one at a time. Full control one at a time. I can have walking onions in one. I can have squash in another one. I can mix up each bed the way I want because you can't really put a ton of stuff in here. I mean, the squash is not going to let a lot of stuff grow. I really can't even grow carrots or radishes in there because they'll smother it out. They'll cover it up. All I've got in there is squash growing and the tomatillos are pushing their way up. They always do. This time of the year, they're really interesting, that plant, because they only grow fruit here for me a certain time of the year. And that's right now. With the small mini beds, the mini raised beds, I can grow watermelon. I can grow Swiss chard. I can grow squash. I can't grow it all together because they'll be fighting, but I can Paste each one. I can set up one. I can set up two. I can set them all up. So for me, it works. That's all I'm saying for me. And we're in a drought situation. Being in a drought situation, I have to watch my water. Boy, do we have to watch water. Now, there's other ways of adding more water in there. Not just putting the holes a little higher up like I always do. And you know how I make my holes about an inch from the bottom so there's a reservoir. If you're in an area and you've got plants that like a lot of drainage, guess what I'm starting to use? I haven't talked that much about it, just starting to bring it up. Plain old cheap kitty litter, cat litter, 100% clay, no perfumes, no additives, no nothing. Throw a couple handfuls of that in there and it keeps your soil draining really good, but it also helps like little sponges, retains water, but it doesn't keep the plants too wet. Think about it. So you've got this little pellet in there, the clay, and the plants can wrap their roots around that. They can hold on to water. I'm not saying the whole thing, but it would be really good if you were doing cactus and succulents. You could use a whole bunch of kitty litter and then small amounts of potting soil. But there's so many little tips and tricks we can do. I don't know anything about, about cat litter other than what I told you. It's just something I thought of one night. I ordered it because it was... Well, the first time I ordered the bag, it was $4 for 25 pounds. I actually was going to order something called grit, but we don't have grit in our nurseries. We have grit for birds, which is also rocks, crushed rocks, and sometimes oyster shells and different things are in there because it's for birds and chickens and different things. But I looked around at different nurseries and nobody had crushed rocks. They had a lot of rocks, you know, ornamental rocks to put around and stuff, but nothing as far as a mulch. I'm not saying they don't have it, just locally where I was looking, I couldn't find it. So I thought, well, what can I use? Because I found some places and you can buy it by the ton. I don't know. You have to order a truckload and they can deliver it. And I didn't want a truckload. I wanted a small amount. So I thought about kitty litter. I went and looked at the ingredients and thought, well, you grow in clay pots. People have clay pots, what do they call it? Oh yeah, so I can't remember where they fill them with water and then it slowly releases the water. I don't even, I had some here. Gary had some, I'm not sure where they are. But you know, I know where it is. It's over by, let's go look by the ginger. You know, a lot of people bury those in the ground. They fill them with water because 
what they do is it weeps water. So I thought, why can't I use that for putting it on top, you know, of my plants? It will hold the water in. It will give them extra water if they need. And guess what? It worked. So we can do that next spring. Here it is. See? People put this in, in the ground. They fill it with water. There's no holes on this. Just dirty from the plants. I mean, see? You know what that is. They bury it. And then they fill it with water. But you have to cap it here because we have a lot of mosquitoes. And then this clay pot will slowly weep out water for your plants. And the plants will put their roots around it. See? The plants will get, get really close to it so they can get the moisture from it. And then they'll get the benefit of getting the water. So that's why I thought, well, if that works for that, why not get kitty litter, the cheap junk that most people don't want because they want something that smells really good, and use it for your plants in the garden. Guess what? It works. It works fantastic. I got cuttings. They're holding the water and they're growing really good. I'm going to start adding it a little bit to some of the plants. I wouldn't add it in the carrots because your carrots, as they grow, will go around it and you'll end up with zigzag carrots. But if you've got something that needs a lot of drainage, and let's say your potting soil you're using or the soil that you're taking out of another tote, looks like it's too wet, like it's going to be too soggy, you can mix that in. I've noticed there hasn't been a whole lot of perlite and stuff in. I think that's what they used to put in a lot of potting soil. They've cut way back. You can add in a little bit of kitty litter. So this way, as you water it, the water will be held by the little granules of clay and the plants can wrap around their tiny feeder roots to it and benefit some water. Try it. If you don't like it, don't, don't use it. It's only four or five dollars for 25 pounds. And if you got home delivery, that comes with your home delivery. If you're ordering food, whether it's from Walmart, Target, wherever you've got home delivery, well, you know, I can go to the store and get it. It's 25 pounds. I don't have to throw it in a shopping cart and bring it home. I just order it with some, I order home delivery Oh, once a week, sometimes once every two weeks, and I throw the kitty litter in there. It doesn't cost anything. So just the $5 for the kitty litter because it went up a little bit. Everything's going up. So we're going to have all kinds of ideas. There's always stuff I come up with and things that I change because I find there's things I can do that would be a whole lot easier. And believe you me, I am sharing that with you. I've got one more thing I know so many of you asked about, and I'm not quite there, but I will this spring because I think it's important enough to talk about something that can save a lot of people that don't have luck with certain plants. There's just been an issue with it. You'll understand when I talk about it what I'm talking about. So we'll get into that another time. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to come out here on a beautiful evening. I'm going to go make dinner. I don't hear him now, but I heard the valley, gale, valley quail. I heard the valley quail calling, and I came out here, and they stop. They'll hide sometimes in the trees, and I've seen them up on the top there, but they're gone now, and you hear that little call that they do. Boo-boo, boo-boo. I can't, I can't do it exactly, but they do a call, and it's so cute. We don't have as many as we had, you know, years ago because a lot of things get to their nest. They nest on the ground. I would love to make more meadows where they can hide and maybe give them more security. But the rabbits hide in there and it's just amazing what's growing in there. So I thought I'd come out and just chit chat. This is just a chit chat. And thinking about things that are going to make life easier. This has really made life easier. I... I can't say how much easier it is made, but it is a lot. By putting a tote on a chair off the ground, I don't have to bend on the ground, though I have them both on the ground too. I don't have to bend if I don't want to, and that keeps the rabbits out. Now, squirrels can get into the lower ones. They don't tend to get too much into the chairs. They can, but they don't tend to really do it. But the ones on the ground, they do. And I think there'll be a lot of stuff as time goes on, you might find, oh, I was doing this like seeds. I'm starting my seeds a little differently now. I just planted some cabbage, but I started it not in a plastic bag. So we'll get into that. There's nothing wrong with plastic bags, but I found another way that's easier. So I think I've talked your ear off. I just wanted to say hello and 
say, you know, I hope you're having a beautiful evening and don't, don't let the holidays bother you so much. Think about it as a fun time, you know, that it's the holidays now. Enjoy yourself with the holidays. Like I said, whether you're home alone and watching TV, it's so nice. And if you are with the family, it's nice too. And what I meant was really gardening. We're going to garden and we're going to garden big time and we're going to do it on the cheap. So if you don't want to buy a lot of stuff, I'm going to get you to garden where it's practically free. And you know that's the way I do it. So have a wonderful evening. And if you want to do a round table on Hallmark movies, tell me. And even Gary might. He knows all the actors' names. I couldn't believe he knows all the actors' names. So with that, I'm going to go forge some tomatillos in there because there's a ton of them. They fall to the ground and they're all wrapped in their own little package, like gift wrapping. And all I have to do is bring them in, wash them, dry them, and freeze them. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, there must be a hundred of them in there.